Hello everyone, it's Frances with String Into a Thing. Welcome to the Cozy Fall Scarf class. It's just awesome to be here with you. If you are a beginner, this is a fantastic project to start out with. We do some striping with the yarn and we attach different colors on. We're doing kind of a granny square design. It kind of has like a shell stitch or a star stitch design at first glance, but really it's some simple clusters of double crochet. And oh my goodness, I'm just so excited. You will need any kind of yarn it is that you would like to use for this project and it's coordinating hook. I will be using this skein of Yarn B Soft and Sleek. This is a four medium weight yarn and I am going to be using a five millimeter hook, which is a number eight. And then I will just have some scissors on hand as well as a tapestry needle. Now you can use any kind of yarn again and coordinate the hook. This one is asking for 5.5, but I'm just gonna be using a five today. And if you want a looser feel to your project, you can just go up a hook size. All you'll need really is just any scrap yarn at home. You can totally stitch this project up. I'm also using this one from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> and then I used two of these, so we will still have some left over. So I had an orange one of Yarn B, and then this yellow. I used up my orange already. <laughs> Are you ready to make this scarf? Awesome, let's do it. So first I'm gonna be starting out with my orange color. And I absolutely love this. Oh my goodness. And from there, we're just going to make a slip knot. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a wonderful day wherever you are. I'm just going to wrap around like this. Under the bottom yarn, over the top yarn, bring it through the loop. And pull. Let go of the tail and tighten a little bit. So this particular project is a multiple of 3 plus 2. And all that means is just you add 3 plus 3 plus 3 until you get the width that you want. And then you just add two more chains to it. Super easy, simple. So for me, I'm actually going to chain 23. And you can do this just a little bit loose, just so it doesn't start to bow in. <laughs> 11, 12, 13, 20, 21, 22, and 23. Perfect. Now we're actually going to single crochet all the way across. So we're gonna start in the second chain from the hook. So this loop doesn't count. This is one and two. Second chain from the hook, I'm just gonna insert at the very top of that loop of the chain. Yarn over, pull through. Now you have two loops. Yarn over and pull through both. And that's your single crochet. And now I'm gonna continue down the row. This will be like a nice little stable foundation for us to be working in our little double crochet clusters. <laughs> and if you're just first starting out, I always like to remember that really big one is the one we just worked in, so it's got to be the next one. <laughs> and if your piece starts to turn into a little curly cue, that's totally normal. Once we start to get more stitches in there, everything's just going to flatten out and it's going to be great. <laughs> So I'm on my last two chains, and here's one more, <laughs> and there it is. So once you get at the very end of the row, we're going to chain three. And then we're going to turn our work, just like this. <laughs> And now this chain three is going to act like our first double crochet. And then you'll notice there's a space right there, the very first stitch. And we're gonna insert into there and do one double crochet right inside there. And after you get those two little guys made, we're actually gonna skip two holes. One, two, and in the third one, we're just gonna go in there. So you finished off right here, skip two holes, and go into the third. So skip, skip, and then we're going to do a cluster of three double crochets in there. And we're just going to jump right in. Again, remembering to go under both of those little loops, the little V. <laughs> and back into the same one. And one more double crochet. And 
And that's what you just did. How awesome. <laughs> and again, repeating that same pattern. We finished off here, skip two holes, and in the third one, three double crochets to make a cluster. Perfect. Skip two, and in the third one, three double crochets. <laughs> Now I'm at the very end of the row, and again, you'll notice these two spaces right here, and that very last one, he's kind of squished at the end, but if you turn them over, you could see those two. We're actually going to do two double crochets in there. Or double crochet, whatever <laughs> way you like to say it. And that completes the row. So we got our foundation chain here, and then we added our single crochet, and now we're building on top of the single crochet with our cluster of three double crochet. And we reached the end of the row, and from here you would just begin that same process for the stackable look. One, two, three chains, turn our work this way, and again, that first stitch right there, we're going to go inside him. Just one, which is a total of two, double crochet. Again, the chain three acts as the first double crochet. And then you repeat the process. Skip two, and in the third, a cluster of three. And you can do this as many times as you'd like. I know your project's going to be turning out just fantastic. And once your eye starts to identify, skipping two, it's going to be so simple and it's going to work up quick. And it's just so relaxing, isn't it? <laughs> And periodically I like to make sure that I'm actually going into the stitch the proper way. You'll know you're in the right spot when you skip two and you're making sure that top V you're going inside him. Making sure you do your <laughs> double crochet right in there. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Now once you've made it this far and you've got your last little portion to do this little opening right here that we created from the row previous, we're actually just going to do two double crochets in this hole itself to complete the round. Just like that. Then from there, you'll do your chain three again. One, two, three. Turn your work. And again, in that first stitch right there, another double crochet. And then you'll continue the pattern. So once you get to the other side, you're just going to go in that ring right here. <laughs> How awesome. So I've made quite a bit of progress and I'm right here at that loop again. And I'm going to do two more double crochets and then I'm going to add on a new color. Super easy, simple. And there's tons of different ways that you can do this, but this is the way I'm going to do it. Once I finish that second double crochet, I'm going to chain one. And then I'm going to set my little piece down, get my scissors. I'm going to leave myself a little bit so I can tuck that in later. Snip and pull. And I'm going to tighten that on. And from this point, I'm going to grab my next color. And now I'm going to get the string and I'm just going to go inside that loop here. In between these two double crochets, I'm going to go right in here, get my yarn, and just pull it through. And then I'm just going to do like a little granny knot on there. Very simple. trying to keep it next to the knot where we ended. Just a double knot. And from there, I'm going to slip my hook back in. That space. I'm going to yarn over, pull through. Now I got a loop on the hook. And then I'm going to continue with the pattern, which is three chains, turning our work, and then going back into the first stitch, which is going to look a little funny, but he's right here. I'm going to yarn over, insert, I'm going to tuck those tails behind, and then I'm going to do a double crochet right there. You might want to move your piece around just a little bit, and then continue the pattern. Skip two, and in the third one, a cluster of three double crochet. 
and then I'm going to continue all the way until I get the thickness of the stripe of the yellow yarn that I like. And you can stop or start whenever you want. <laughs> That's the beauty of this freedom we have. Making sure again to skip two, and then in that third one, getting under both of those loops, yarning over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, two more times. <laughs> And then you'll get to your last part right here again, and two double crochet inside that little loop. So easy. And then the pattern repeats. Three chains, turn our work, and into that first stitch right here. <laughs> Okay, and again, I'm coming up on my last ring. I did nine rows of these clusters. And just two double crochet and a chain one to end the row. And attach a new yarn. Again, I'm gonna leave myself maybe four and a half or so inches of a tail. Pull through and tighten. And from here, I'm gonna add another color. <laughs> this time I'm actually gonna go for this cute little brown. Oh my goodness. And you can even get your finger too if you wanted to just go inside that ring and just stick that in there <laughs> and tie it on, leaving a nice long tail so we can tuck it in later. You are doing so great, oh my goodness, right next to the other knot. And one more. Perfect. From there I'm going to enter, I'm going to throw my tail to the side there and go through that opening and yarn over, pull through it. Now I have a loop on my hook. And again, chain three, turn our work, and right inside, you can even go inside the ring itself, whatever you feel comfortable doing. <laughs> okay, for the startup, they kind of get a little bit closer together when we do that. And then you can again, skip two, wrap your yarn around the hook, insert, and again, a cluster of three double crochet. And you can go as long or as short as you'd like with these little stripes. <laughs> so I just showed you two different ways that you can start your yarn off. You can go in that stitch or you can just go into the opening ring itself or that little, that little hole. But once you get the hang of this, you're gonna be flying through this project and you will be done in no time. <laughs> now I'm finishing up my last row of my brown. Again, two double crochet to finish it off. And then straight from there, we can actually chain three and then turn our work and repeat the pattern. From there, you can decide to go in the stitch or even in the ring. I'm just gonna go in the stitch because this one is a bit normal. It's not the attached side where we began a new color. <laughs> so I'm just gonna follow the pattern again for nine rows. So I've been making some good progress here and I've added my colors again. And what I really love about this is that as you add new colors, or even if you're using variegated yarn, which is just yarn that changes color on its own, it's wonderful because it keeps it interesting. <laughs> Instead of continuing to see the same color over and over again. <laughs> So once your eye gets nice and used to it, you're basically just jumping on the very center of these little clusters and you're going right inside this one. So you'll look at the three double crochet and you'll just identify that center point. We're just going to stack them right on top of each other. <laughs> this is so much fun. It's working up really, really quick. Soon we will tuck in all these little tails and then we can add our cute little tassels, totally optional but it really adds that nice finished look. And if you ever run out of yarn, you can always just finish your row with the amount that you have that you think you can stop with. And then you would just close it up again. You chain one and then you 
tie off right there. And then this you could just use for another <laughs> tiny little scrap project and then just bring back in and tie it on just like we have been when we switch colors. Just this time, it's the same. <laughs> And then you would just continue. And I'm just stopping every time I do nine. So nine rows each. And I'm going to try to stretch out my orange as best I can. <laughs> So I ended up just adding as much as I could with the orange and then I attached my yellow yarn and again I'm going to do the sequence of nine rows and continue. Then you could stop in the middle of your project and you know try it on and see what you like. I'm right here finishing up my last row and now before we actually finish this I would like us to chain one and turn our work and go back in each stitch and just apply a single crochet. I'm just going to slip it right in. So each individual little hole stitch is going to need a single crochet all the way down. And that's just inserting, yarning over, and pulling through two. So right in here, yarn over, pull through, two loops on the hook, and then you yarn over again and pull through both, all the way down. And now I have one more stitch right here to do. And then I'm just going to add one inside this circle right here just to finish it off. Just to kind of give it that square off look. Now I'm going to chain one and get my scissors out, make a tail, and then I'm going to tighten off from this point. Now both ends of our scarf are going to have that single crochet finished edging. And I just love it so much. Now I'm going to get my tapestry needle and start weaving in some of these ends. First I'm going to start with this side. So there are totally tons of different ways that you can do this, but me, I'm just going to get my yarn, stick it through the eye, pull it through, <laughs> and I'm just going to kind of let it dangle there and I'm going to get kind of as close as I can here and I'm going to kind of just start going wherever I think I should be. Now if that's on one side and the other, up and down, totally up to you. I'm just going to be sticking this particular yarn in on its same color just so it's a little bit more disguised in there. And I know this is probably the most tedious part of the entire project and really any crochet project, but it really ends up being a beautiful finish look when you take your time. And once you go in there far enough, you just kind of pull your piece through, unbunch it a little bit, find that little end that might be sticking out, and be very careful not to cut into your actual stitches. And then there you have that. You just tucked them in. I love it so much. So for this yellow one, I'm going to stick on the yellow. And for the brown, of course, I'm going to stick on the brown. <laughs> you can even go this direction with it, or you can go on the edge. I think I'm going to go down this way just because it's a bit more tight. And I can go up and down, right through there. Pretty much wherever you think you should be. You can even kind of start going in some of those or even in between on the inside of some of these brown ones where you can't really tell you can go right under there it's a little bit more tension inside those points right there and sometimes I like to twist it around whenever you feel like you put it in far enough just pull your piece through sometimes you might have to grab it like this <laughs> unbunch it and snip very very carefully now even for extra security, you can go one direction and then go back another direction. So once you're done sticking it through one way, like this orange piece here, if you have enough tail room, you would pull one direction and then you would go back down. Kind of a slightly different path the opposite way. Just to ensure that it doesn't untangle. So this is the technique that I actually recommend. <laughs> And from here, I'm going to continue tucking in all my little tails. And then we can come back and add the wonderful little tassels on. And there you have it. 
sometimes even if you wanted, you can go in the ply of the yarn right through it as well. So I have finished weaving in all my little tails and oh my goodness, I'm so excited to be done with that step. Now I can actually choose out what yarn we would like to have for the tassels. And again, this is totally optional. You do not need to add this at all. For me, I think yellow would be great contrast for the orange and brown on both sides. So you can really do this any way you want. Um, I typically am a scrapbooker, so I use a lot of twine and yarn a lot of the times. So I would actually just get the size that you want it to hang and kind of fold it in half and see what you like and then fold it again. And depending on how thick you want that strand bundle to be, I would go one more time and then I would snip it right here. Then from there I would go in half and in half and then you would just pick your spot. So for me, I think a good spot would be right here in this corner, just starting out. Just right here in this little opening right there. So this loop end right here is easily just gonna be, I'm just gonna stick my hook in there, drawn through. Now, depending on what side you want it to look like, you would just continue to work off the same side. So for me, because I did it like that, I have to continue to repeat that same entry so it's going to look something like that. Starting off on the other end would actually just help us get through this a little bit more balanced. <laughs> so I'm going to find that cute little opening right there and stick my hook in there and get ready for my next piece. Again, match it up with the other one. Kind of fold it over once and then fold it over again. Find my scissors and cut at that point. Then I'm going to take the two ends, get that loop, meet that loop next to the end here, and then I've got my wonderful, fantastic guy ready to go. And I'm just gonna pull them right inside here. And once I get them, you guessed it, it's just like that simple macrame type of knot right there. And the other side is really cute because it has this finished little loop where it kind of has that nice finished look. So the other side will be <laughs> the front. And you would just continue from there. I would find my center point somewhere right about here. It doesn't have to be anything too specific. I'm going to pinpoint that little spot and do it again. <laughs> it's always better to have more than not enough. That way you can kind of gauge and trim away because you really can't add the yarn back on. You'll just have to recut all over again. <laughs> Same folding technique there. Two ends and then make a loop. And you can kind of tug on it until you have it the way you like. Not too loose, not too tight. And you see, you could have layered your yarn up more to have like a thicker tassel. And then I'll go in between those spots. And you can add as many or as few of these as you'd like on yours. Once you have all your little tassels on, you can adjust them and tighten them or loosen them as you wish. And then, of course, the best part is we can actually trim them afterward. So, of course, you might need to find that shortest one out of all of them and kind of go from there. You can even kind of slice the loop itself if you kind of wanted to give yourself a little more leeway. And then kind of follow the rest. I typically like to cut longer this way more than I think because it kind of squishes back up. So if I'm trying to match it up with this, I'm going to go this way, about a quarter inch or so. And we can always come back and fine tune this up just the way we want it to be. And I think that looks so adorable. I'm going to use the same technique for the other side. <laughs> now it's totally up to you for you to decide what side it is that you would like these little guys to be loopy on. <laughs> I've kind of just got mine crisscrossed like this. So the loop side is facing me, and then the cross side here, just crossing over the top. And then I'm putting the loop side face down again. <laughs> now I'm going to use the one before as a little reference point. And oh my goodness, I can't believe it. We just finished this scarf in an afternoon. Well, that completes the Cozy Fall scarf. I've had an absolute blast being here with you. And I really hope you enjoy your awesome scarf project. 
catch you in my next video. Bye!